Hello and welcome to the Trend Talk. We are your hosts, Maravina Jaimes and Belle Hernandez. On today's episode, we'll get a sneak peek at one of the most talked about TV shows, Netflix Selena the Series. Here to tell us all about his role is Julio Macias, who you may know as Spooky from the Netflix show On My Block. Then we'll chat it up with the man with a thousand voices, or almost. <laughs> you know him as the Taco Bell Chihuahua, Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, Skylar from Elena of Avalar, and you also know him as Deputy Garcia on Reno 911, Carlos Alasraki. So don't go away. We'll be right back with actor Julio Macias from the upcoming series, Selena the Series. The traveling, the hot, the cold. She needs a break, Abraham. Can't like him. I mean it, that would freak out. To Selena. Y los vinos. Our first guest is not only talented, but greatly admired for his awesome delivery as Spooky Diaz in the popular On My Block on Netflix. He recently finished shooting the show everyone is waiting for, Selena the Series. We want to welcome Julio Macias. Hi. Hi, Julio. It's so good to see you. Same Same morning. morning. So in Selena the Series, you play Pete Astudillo. Tell us who this character is. So I I found out about Pete after I auditioned. You know, it it was a very nice, long, uh, thorough (laughs) Uh, audition process and when I booked Pete I didn't really know who he was so I you know I started doing my research and he was not only Selena's duetist but an accomplished uh, Tejano music musician himself um, with an amazing voice and a repertoire of himself uh, by for himself and he started uh, writing also with AB and Selena so a lot of the songs that uh, we now love and remember um, Pete had a, a great deal to, to to put into that and to write that and, and to translate a lot of lyrics that she was writing in English into Spanish and and um man uh like we say in Mexico era una bala like that guy uh danced sang moved composed uh so it was it there were big shoes to fill for sure you you mentioned that she uh, that he wrote or co-wrote some of the um some of her greatest hits like Bidi Bidi Bam Bam Amor Prohibido and um what como la flor como la flor so, um, mm-hmm. but I wanted to also, uh, before we talk about his uh, writing and you performing, I guess, in the band, you said you had a strenuous audition process. Tell us about that. Uh, it was uh, it was just long. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, Carla Hull did her, her due diligence and she brought in an array of, uh, of incredible uh, Latinx uh, actors and actresses to, to, to read for these roles. And so I read for for Chris. I read for Joe. Um, I never actually read for Pete, but it's funny because I, I read for Chris a couple of times, and I think that was just a, a good introduction to bring people in with sides that you know had to do with Selena and and and, and connection. And uh, when I auditioned in front of uh, Rico, which is one of our executive producers, he um, he's like, "Can you sing?" And I said, "Yeah, uh, can, can you sing us something?" So I said, "Well, what do you want?" It's like, "Well, uh, anything in Spanish." I was like, "Oof, I know some mariachis and some um, um, boleros." And so he's like, "All right, sing something." So I was like, "All right, la media vuelta," and I sang la media vuelta, and it was just like the room kind of like spooky can sing what is this um oh, and, uh, God. he brought in we some other hear that hold on a second give us a little bit of la media vuelta <laughs> we're on the spot why don't you <laughs> okay um te vas porque yo quiero que te vayas a la hora que yo quiera te detengo yo sé que mi cariño te hace falta pero aunque quieras o no yo soy tu dueño Bravo! Oh my God! Bravo. That's awesome. 
Well, we're glad we actually had Carla Hu on the show and she talked about the audition process and how she, you know, brought as many people to the auditions as he as she could and uh she did a great casting and you included. So congratulations. Yeah. We also had Noemi Gonzalez on, and she was telling us that she had to learn how to play la batería, the, the drums. So did you actually play any instruments in uh, your performance? Uh, Pete, uh, I had to learn how to cumbia. That was something that I didn't know how to do. So it was just, you know, the two, three step, two, three step kickback uh, in the grocery store, in the shower while I was cooking. Um, <laughs> Pete was a singer. Um, sometimes he got the cowbell, so I got to, you know, play the cowbell just on beat, which was fun in some of the concerts. But more than anything, it, the, the, even though he was a fantastic singer, I could, I could sort of mimic his voice and I could get there where I had, a, a, a where I had to put in the work was the dance. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had to, I had to definitely get hit the gym, if you will, or, or the studio for that. So let us ask you something, because everyone is waiting for this project. I mean, Selena was just, uh, you know, a game changer on so many levels. So in your own words, what is it like to work on Selena the series? Uh, daunting at first. Um, and then as soon as the cast clicked, um, a blast. It was, it was, you know, we we were given the liberty to to um, perform so you know we weren't carbon copies of these people but we were giving them um paying them homage and 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 taking from them and getting a little bit of us so it was it was like forming a new band if you will <laughs> so uh going up there with, with with christian there was there was moments and i've said this before where where she would twirl or we, where she would do something and i'm like Yo, am I on stage performing with Selena right now? This is crazy. Um, it it was this this euphoric energy, and 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 uh, you could see it in the takes. And at first, it was because we were mimicking the 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 tapes that we would get from from their performances. But after a while, we I was looking at Gabe, who played AB or or, or Hunter, um, who, and we would just look back at each other and smile. And Jesse was playing Chris as well. Like we would. We would crack up on stage, and we but we would we would keep it with the flow and the rhythm, and we would um, sometimes between takes in before COVID, obviously when we had uh, an actual audience to play for, we would ask um, we would ask the AD, hey, can, can you know um, the first AD could could we play the music? Can we can we hype these people up? So even though we were lip singing in some of them, um, we would perform for the for for, for the audience to get really. It was a blast. It, it was it was really fun. Wow! I you mentioned Chris. Were you talking about Chris uh, Perez? A little. So you actually got to meet some of the real life characters, persons. Oh no 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 not not at all no 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 no. Uh, we uh, Jesse Jesse Posey who plays Chris Perez. Okay. We all got really close, so we would look to each other on stage. And we would kind of nod at each other and be like, "Hey, what's up? We're doing this." And we would laugh. We, if we would trip up, you know, uh, we would we would catch each other and and like smile it off and laugh it off. And 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 like obviously there were more there were more multiple takes, but it it really did become this this band. You know, um, you Noemi, know, like you said, like a, you know, salute to her. She really learned how to play those drums, and she kept the beat with us. You know, this entire time and. Um, Carlos, uh, who played Joe, who, who was the other half of Los Bad Boys with Kiasadillo before the Selena days, uh, he's a he's a musical prodigy. That guy, that that guy can play anything and and played really, really, really well. So um, we would kind of look to him. Hey, uh, is this how you do this lick? Is this how you play this chord? Um, how would you hit this beat? Um, we 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 relied on him as well. So it was it was fun. Like it was like a band. I have a question. What would Spooky say about you playing, <laughs> you being in, the, in Los Dinos? <laughs> um, Spooky wouldn't say anything. Uh, however, Oscar Diaz um, would, uh, he would be jelly. He'd be jealous and proud in a way because, you know, he didn't get to do his his whole culinary 
escapades. He didn't he didn't get to become a cook, but you know, there's something creative about being a cook. You have to be able to grab different tastes and smells and combine them in an artistic way to create a dish. Um, so I think he would have uh, laughed, you know, but also, I mean, these songs are some songs that you put on and anyone in, 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 in the Hispanic Latinx community would, would you can't help but like kind of rock, even if you're not a Selena fan, like it's just, it's one, it's, it's one of those songs that just you're born with, I feel, you know? It's infectious music. I wanted to ask you also about On My Block. I know you guys were announced that you have a fourth season back in July of this year. And unfortunately, because of COVID, I don't know where that's at. So can you give us a little insight into it? Uh, you know, we're we're being very careful. Uh, same as Elena. Selena had to sort of get a lot of actors free for, uh, you know, the, the future engagements. So they they you know they doubled down on their investment for you know covid protocols and, and whatnot and uh lauren being the amazing yeah. showrunner that she is for on my block is taking it very slowly very carefully making sure that all health um requirements are are, are met uh so that the actors and the cast uh, and the crew and and the creatives are all protected and still work uh without having any feeling of are we going to get shut down? Are we going to get shut down? Are we going to get shut down? Um, I know kind of where the fourth season is going, and I'm I'm very excited to bring this this uh, this version of of Oscar to 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 the public. Um, but that's 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 about all I got. <laughs> okay, we'll take it. We'll take whatever you yeah. give us. Definitely, yeah. we're so excited to know that on my block has a fourth season coming, and we're so excited that you are in Selena the series. Thank you so much, Julio, for being with us today. And don't go away, the trend talk will be right back with amazing voice actor Carlos Salarraqui. Today, we welcome an amazing voiceover talent and comedic actor, Carlos Alarraqui. You know him as Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life, Skylar from Elena de Avalor, and Mr. Crocker from Fairly Odd Parents. And don't forget Sergio from Emmy-nominated Los Casagrandes, and of course, who can forget him as the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Welcome, Carlos Alasraqui, and congratulations on the Imagen Award nomination for Los Casagrandes. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias. Estoy estudiando mi español en Duolingo, but yes, uh, excited about both Imagen and uh, Emmy nominations for Los Casagrandes. It's a fun show. It's beautiful. It's uh, a tapestry of Latino culture, Mexican, you know, Puerto Rican, South American. Uh, and the most fun, and most fun, the, it's hilarious. So that, yes, that part is always important. It's really well done, and, and I'm glad Miguel Puga's story is coming to life and resonating with a lot of different people. So happy, happy, happy. Yeah, well, we are, are incredibly happy to have you on the Trend Talk. And I have to ask you, I mean, we've done, um, you know, voice work together. And of course, I'm a big fan. We've sat on panels at the Academy and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I got to just ask for everyone watching you that loves you and wants to know about how to do voices in your incredible, uh, you know, uh, wheelhouse of voices. Which are your favorite voices? And tell us how you got started. I think the origins of, of being a voiceover actor, for my parents being from Argentina, my dad went to an all British school in Loma, and uh, which coincidentally is an area that my friend uh, Nacho Sericchio is from. And then hearing the South American dialect from my mom in, at my house, Carlitos, no me diga que querés, vos querés. Uh, Pocho, you know, and then going over to my friend Kevin's house and his parents being from Glasgow, Scotland, going Carlos. And so right away, I had this wide array of sounds and voices and characters that I just soaked up. Um, and then I got into voiceover through stand-up comedy. I was doing characters in Rocco. This little Australian wallaby who has a little bit more of a Cockney accent became my very first voice in my intro into the voiceover animation world. So I came through that path. And, and these days, people can make their traditional voiceover tape or link and send it off to agents. Mm -hmm. Z Bradley Baker is a voiceover actor who has a whole big uh, um, informational uh, instructions on what do I do to become a voiceover actor online. Um, but people can make their own content on YouTube now, on TikTok, make their own cartoons with line drawings. 
So there's many different avenues. People can take improv classes, be in plays, do stand-up comedy. There's all kinds of avenues that can get you towards this type of career. And then it's auditioning and auditioning and auditioning. And even still after 91, what, 30, 29 plus years, I'm constantly auditioning. And most of the stuff you audition for, you don't get. So you're, you're, yeah. you're going to be a fisherman or a fisher person your whole life. You'll always be auditioning. You but always be casting. <laughs> it's, 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 it's part of the craft and, and it's exciting. And now during COVID, I mean, it's very different. Now, look at you. This is your sound stage at home, right? Yes, estoy haciendo voices. And you're mostly voices. doing exclusively recording from home? Uh, no, most of my voices are here from the casa and in my garage. And occasionally there are some studios who have uh, worked out the protocol and I will go, por ejemplo, para la programa Maya and the Three, uh, con Jorge Gutierrez, El Maestro, I have gone to uh, LA Studios to record for Maya and the Three. Um, I've gone to also Salami Studios or Bang Zoom to do a couple of other shows, but most of them, it's it's safer for them to have uh, actors record from home if they have the setup. So yeah. Some studios are actually sending equipment out every so often. So yes, Nickelodeon sends out too. a computer. Yes, Nickelodeon sent out a, a... I'm on my own laptop now, but Nickelodeon gives, gives me this big fancy one. Ooh. Wow. Wow. And, I, <laughs> and they gave me a, a hype mic, but I ended, I ended up buying my own hype mic. But I really am thankful and grateful to the engineers who helped me somebody who is technologically uh, intimidated, get my booth up to snuff with what equipment to buy, how to run Source Connect now, how to run a Zoom call, how to do a backup file, how to use Dropbox and Google Drive. And it's stuff that I didn't know before. And because of where we are, uh, I've always had this whisper booth, but I had to add padding. I, oops, I don't know how to use it. I had to go and buy shower curtain rods above me and hang blankets just to add uh, padding to get it to a more professional sound, so all that stuff. No, the times have definitely changed. I mean, I was gonna ask you about technique, but the reality is, I mean, you have to uh, not only be the voice actor, but you have to be your own engineer. You have to have some limited editing skills. Yep. And you mentioned Source Connect, of course. And I mean, I do that in my own uh, voiceover training classes as well. Yep. But um, really quick, when you uh, get a script for a, a voice and you get a couple specs I mean do you start with voices you already know or do you do you do you start a new voice by where you're gonna place it I mean a nasal voice or I mean how do you do it give it's, us a, a like for example this morning I just joined Lego City Adventures and played oh, cool. a new character it'll come out soon but it was a character they thought was gonna be a certain way and so I did some research and on what they I thought they wanted it was kind of in this range you know, but an expert and love science, but it, it ended up being somebody more like this. Well, don't you know that 5% of 23% of the tests done are not correct? And it's like, it was completely disparate from where I thought it was going to be. Um, I'm on Camp Coral now. And so Doug Lawrence, who created this character, had an idea for where he wanted him to be, actually wrote out some dialogue in gibberish. And I read and studied the gibberish. But I ended up kind of doing my own version. It sounded a little bit like this. Never wanted to tell you. you hear a few words of it and you make it out. So um, it's both sometimes you work with the director. Sometimes you have your own idea. Sometimes your own idea could be way off or right on par with what they want. Um, for Carlos Casagrande, originally, they, you know, it was basically, but they said, make him uh, nerdier. He is also a guy that's into science. Did you know that La Chancla was invented by a mother? <laughs> you know, um, and then for Sergio, they wanted a parrot, but I definitely gave him the attitude because it's not just, Barley, watch it, right? You're like, Rick, here we go again. He's sarcastic. He's biting. He's derisive. Um, and then there's a character on Casa Grande. It's called Vito Filipponio. And he's Italian and he's kind of a mooch. And he's kind of this guy that's like, oh, I came to see Hector. We, uh, we were going to blow up. But if you got free food, I'll take it. So, so tell me, Carlos, how many. Uh, Characters are you doing at once? Because I hear you, I'm, I'm on this show, and I'm on that show, I'm on that show. So right now, how many characters are you doing presently? It's been really busy. I'd say 15 to 20. Whoa. <laughs> how do you keep the characters so um, separate? You know, do, do, does it ever, like, one character go confused? into another character? Oftentimes you need a, a voice reference. Yeah, you know, it can bleed into another character, and you'll go, wait, what show was I doing again? <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Um, I think there was a character on, uh, on uh, Maya and the Three that was very similar to a character I was playing on Treze, which is a Filipino graphic novel cartoon, but also very similar to characters I had done on El Tigre in Book of Life. You know, this guy had an attitude, but he wasn't quite Grandpapi from El Tigre or General Posada from Book of Life, but he's sort of in between. He's right here. You think you can conquer me? Wow. So you kind of steer, and then Jorge is there to go, oh, I think you're, you're a little off. Sir, I'm detecting a higher level of sass. The foot is down. The foot is down. Whoo! Come, fly with me, Gachinha. All right, Princess Elena. Maids and Luna are okay, but I know you want to ride the best. Ha <laughs> ha, me, Skylar. Maria, you have disgraced me and the whole village of San Angel. Hey, everybody, watch out for Nasty Nork, and I'll be with you throughout the game. All right. Yo quiero Taco Bell. Viva, gorditas. You that's are amazing never... how you can keep yeah. that. I mean, that's a true professional there. People, oh, like, some you. other people wouldn't, wouldn't know. Couldn't I can't remember my daughter's names, but I can figure out voices. Yeah. So give us the 911 on your Reno 911 character, Carlos. Well, as you know, in February, just before this craziness happened in the world, we were able to go down and shoot in Piru, California shoot about 12 episodes worth of uh, Quibi shows. So uh, you get more Reno. So it was fun. It was uh, fun to transition into this short form uh, format that Quibi has and go out and film a bunch of stuff and see the gang again and actor sure. Joe Latrulio and, and, uh, and Ian Roberts and, and the rest of the gang that I'd acted with before. And uh, it's back. It's fun. Well, we're, we're very happy because it's, it's, um, we're very happy because it is a hilarious show. But in general, I mean, with all the years you've been doing it, you guys have over 100 episodes of Reno 911. We must. We must. Now, yeah, yeah. there's so much in the tank. Uh, My almost... absolute favorite one, of course, is one, the, the pilot. Just that, that yeah. first 30 seconds when yeah. someone's having a surprise party, but, they, but they're, they're calling you in. Yep. Oh, what dogs are barking. And you, shoot, somebody... yeah, and you shoot somebody. I say that freeze, is shoot, and it's surprise yeah but uh working with thomas Len lennon and uh i mean all these um, niecy nash uh of course wendy and kobe i mean this is so great you guys are obviously uh you know true grit improv actors you can fly with anything it almost seems like you're not scripted but the show is scripted right no in as much as there's a paragraph and an idea so, for example, when Jones and Garcia go up on a roof to investigate two kids trying to jump their bikes from one roof to another, that's all we know. We know that something's going to go wrong. Uh, there's going to be an accident at the end and we're going to take off. But all the dialogue is made up. Hmm. Awesome. Well, in addition to your on-camera talent and your voice talent, you also are a writer and producer and yes. you've done a few projects. So, um, What's happening in that area? Yeah, the latest and greatest is with my co-writer and really good friend, Jill Michelle Meleon, who I met years ago at Jeff Alice's Latino La Festival. Mm -hmm. And this year we came full circle. We, our origin story was that Jill and I met there. And then this year we screened and premiered our movie, Witness Infection, which is a mixture of Shaun of the Dead meets Goodfellas. You know, there's a mob... Uh, there's a mob arranged marriage going to happen. My youngest son doesn't want to do it. I force him to do it. And then everybody's eating poison sausages and the whole world <laughs> turns upside down and people turn into zombies. So it's called Witness Infection. You can go to witnessinfection.com to check out reviews, to check out awards that we won. We are in the middle of distribution hunt. We've got uh, more than a few good leads. So hopefully it will be streaming on a service uh, near you within 2020. Hope the goal is to get it out by November or December. Sounds so much awesome. fun. I can't wait. Yes. I can't wait to Finger see Fingers crossed. Thank you. And congratulations. Well, Carlos, I have one last question for you. Yes. As someone who also has an unusual name, mm -hmm. I just want to know, uh, what is it that you do to make your last name, Alasraki, stick? <sighs> Alasraki, Alasraki. I don't know. You know what? It sounds kind of altruistic and weird, but it's, I think it, as, as we just become ourselves, we emanate more of who we are and the last name seems to fit it. It's weird to hear my daughter say, because my daughter acts Riley, my oldest one, and my youngest oh. one, some of she'll go, I'm Riley Ellis Rocky, I'm four foot nine, I live in Burbank. And I'm like, I'm hearing my last name. And I'm like, yeah, it makes sense now. But, you know, to spell it or to help people out, I always say starring Al as Rocky, Ellis Rocky. Huh. So I think it's more, you know what it is, it's just owning your last name. 
it, it yes. is what it is and yeah you're proud of it and then people people see it and more so. and more we as latinos are owning our last name Absolutely. and we're going and we're saying this is gutierrez this is yeah. my name is bellarmina and yeah, i'm owning it now because you know we don't feel like we're other you know we are yes American. yeah we are my so yes. this has been so much fun thank yes. you for thank doing you. your characters i love them all thank and you. don't I forget know to follow Carlos on Instagram at Carlos Alanzraki. We'll put it on the Chiron so that you can see how to spell it. <laughs> exactly. So don't go away, we'll be right back. Today's Trend Talk Trendsetter shout out goes to Casa O101, a theater founded by screenwriter and producer Josefina Lopez. Casa O101 is dedicated to providing inspiring theater performances, art exhibits, and educational programs in Boyle Heights, thereby nurturing the future storytellers of Los Angeles who will someday transform the world. Casa O101 offers year-round classes in acting and writing for youth and adult and is an artistic cultural gem in the heart of Los Angeles. It is a nonprofit organization and needs your donations to keep doing the important work they do. So go to casao101.org, check out all their awesome work and donate so that they can continue to make a difference. Thank you for joining us on The Trend Talk and remember to follow us at The Trend Talk Show on Instagram. And remember, if it's trending, we're, we're talking. talking.